Okay, so this is the mpv.conf, and you've also got uh, these folders, scripts and scripts ops. Um, you're going to need to put autoload and autoload.conf in there. Um, I will explain basically all the options here. Whoops, don't need those. Um, you got hard hardware to code no and codex none. That's just because you're using GPU interpolation. So if you're not using GPU interpolation, you can turn the hardware decoding on. Um, it just makes a very small difference in the GPU performance because there's less load on the GPU and more on the CPU when you're not using hardware decoding. There's also a quality difference and file um, compatibility difference with hardware to code versus software to code. So it's up to you whether you want to use it. Um, these, uh, I got these settings from another um, another config file. I used it as base and then I tweaked it all. So uh, a lot of these are self-explanatory. Uh, the video output level is full. You want that to be that way because the way GPU conversion works is it takes all the full range RGB stuff and then it'll output it as limited or YCBCR depending on what you pick in your graphics control panel for NVIDIA and, and AMD. So yeah, just keep that at full range output unless you're seeing big issues with the black levels or the the black detail if that all is different on your graphics card you know feel free to change it or put it on auto or whatever um debanding don't know why that's there i swear i turned that off you don't want deband unless you're seeing banding um in your content i, I don't I haven't been using MPV until like the last week in Windows, by the way. I started using TensorRT, so now I'm using it in Windows again. I was using it in Linux for multiple months. That's why D-Band was on still. D-Banding removes detail from the image in exchange for smoothing out um, color gradients. So if you're seeing a lot of posterization gradients in the media that you're watching, turn it on and it can look good depending on the settings. Um, yeah, also green should be at zero. These settings aren't perfect. Um, you can look at my MPV Rife pack. That's where you're gonna find this file anyway. I'm not gonna upload it again. You need to go watch my MPV Rife video or at least look in the description and grab the file in order to access this config file. Or you can copy down all these options from watching the video, it's up to you. Um, yeah, the green, don't like that because it raises the black level, but um, you can just play with these values and that's how you're gonna change how it affects the image. It's kind of like a perfect balance thing or like you accept the effects of the D-band or you accept the effects of the banding, it's up to you. And then I do explain the scaling options in here, but um, there's a lot you can do. I've turned off the linear downscaling and upscaling because it introduces artifacts of its own and I'm not using ringy uh, upscalers anyway, or ringy upscalers or downscalers anyway. The same thing with sigmoid, uh, there's no reason to have that on, but correct downscaling, you put it on. These are the anti-ringing options, basically, for, um, also, also there's these, for if you're using Lan Lanskos or um, Spline36 or something ringy like that. Uh, yeah, just leave everything like this unless it looks too blurry to you. Uh, personally, I like it this way, so up to you and then you can just delete all of these VF lines on all of these if you're not using my interpolation setup stuff this config file does work for the uh, SP, SVP um, setup video that I showed and in fact you do want this uh, for that but you will delete or comment out all of these VF lines when you use that together with, uh, yeah, the other one. Um, the HDR stuff, um, you can put this on darken or desaturate. Darken um, darkens the image for the colors, like to balance the colors in the tone mapping, um, or the gamut mapping, which is part of the tone mapping. Darken, yeah, darken darkens it, and desaturate desaturates it. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's up to you which trade-off that you want, um, and obviously 
the higher your nits are, the closer they are to the actual HDR target, the less that effect is going to even take place. So um, at different nit values, it may make sense to use one or the other. Like say if you have 400 nits versus 100 nits, darken or desaturate may look better or worse at those nit values as compared to the other one. Um, just experiment with it. I use darken because I prefer the more punchy saturated colors. That's the whole point of HDR, really. I prefer to lose a little bit of punch to the image um, in monochrome to gain back the color saturation, more natural looking colors, saturated colors. Um, and then the target primary, as I explained in the other video, um, that you would want to set that to the ICC profile, the, the setting up here, if you're using an ICC profile. If not, just leave it at BT2020. And it will automatically, yeah, m try and map it to BT2020. Or it'll output the BT2020 primaries. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much everything. These are like random uh, YouTube downloader settings. And if you don't have YouTube downloader set up, then it won't work. Um, 